Hello, I'm Mark Hughes. Welcome to the special edition of Disability Viewpoints. With me today is my distinguished guest, the Honorable Justin Page, who is going to talk to us today about voting, and, and uh, it's an exciting subject for me. There's a lot of different avenues to cover. There's a lot of absentee val uh, voting going on now in the state of Minnesota. There are, have been some questions about voting places and accessibility that we normally uh, get on a, on a voting year. So with that, I'll introduce the Honorable Justin Page and welcome him to the show. And Justin, tell us about voting here in Minnesota. Uh, so first of all, thank you, Mark, for having me. It's a really pleasure uh, to be on your show again. Uh, you make the ratings go right through the roof. Well, that's, that's good to hear. So election day, uh, election day is we're less than 13 days. I'm not sure when this is going to air, but election day is coming up Tuesday, November 8th. And absentee voting right now, either via the mail or in person, is in full swing. The only thing you want to make sure if you vote absentee via mail is to have those ballots in by election day. Otherwise, it's not going to count. Right, and it's usually a week prior to. There's a requirement. I forget what it is. Right. Well, the ballot just needs to be in by election day. Postmarked, yeah. Post, or no, not just postmarked. It needs to be in by election okay. day. Right. So if you're going to, if you still have an absentee ballot and you're going to mail it in, I'd mail it in right now because the mail can be a little slow these days. And I've got good news from the control room. We're going to have this on before Election Day. So Fantastic. people will see this real soon. Great. And tell us a little bit about the history of voting in Minnesota from a disability standpoint. I mean, we've had the auto mark machines, and we've had some questions in the Senate about the different ballots we should or shouldn't use. So this, and voting in Minnesota from a disability aspect has quite a history, really. Yeah, it absolutely does have uh, quite a history. We do have, uh, we've had voting accessibility uh, for a while, uh, thanks to the ADA and the Civil Rights Act of 1965, mm -hmm. uh, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Uh, and that, those <laughs> laws, have made it clear that people with disabilities are entitled to assistance uh, in the polling place. Um, if you come forward a, a little bit, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, Minnesota, Minnesota got a, or because of the Help America Vote Act, uh, which required uh, in a ballot marking machine, uh, and Minnesota purchased the auto mark for all uh, 87 counties. And so every precinct in Minnesota had auto mark machines. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a little bit. Uh, now the auto mark, because it's really 1990s technology, mm -hmm. uh, so that technology is pretty old. Uh, there are other ballot marking machines there are four uh, in Minnesota, including the auto mark. So not every mm -hmm. county uses the auto mark, but every precinct will have a ballot mark machine uh, when you go to the poll. Right. Now, the history with auto mark is there was some question in the very beginning, and I think 60 Minutes did stories on them, and I, I just said we've had different ballots we use and don't use in the state of Minnesota. So there have been some discussion that, on that over time. And I know Mary Kiffmeyer got involved with that. And uh, finally, they came to agreement on, I think it was two different ballots that we technically use here in Minnesota. And, uh, and uh, but the auto mark was never, I don't think, in question. And there were some other machines they looked at, too. Right. And the automark wasn't in question. No. Because, I mean, 
you have a paper ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, you put your ba paper ballot into the Automark or the accessible voting machine and it marks the ballot and you have that marking, you have an actual physical ballot that you place in the ballot box uh, and then is scanned and counting. So if there's any questions right. with regards to recounts or anything, you can actually go and look. Yeah, and then uh, that's pretty accurate also. Yes, yeah, yeah it's, it's very uh, accurate. So let's, can we fast forward to say it's November 8th? Yep, and two weeks away. Two weeks 13 away. 13 days. 13 days, we're, we're flying through time. Here. Yes, we are. But uh, so let's say it's November 8th and you decide that you wanna go to your polling place. Now you have options at home to either vote absentee or which is done ahead of time or go to your polling place. Yep. And if you want a ride to your polling place other than the transportation we have every other day of the year, there are agencies you can call to get a ride, I think, or transportation is sometimes can be prearranged. Is that true? Well, we used to have, uh, you know, 15, 16 years ago, we used to have uh, a group of nonprofits uh, partnered up uh, to do what is called uh, ride to the polls uh, mm -hmm. to individuals with disabilities. Uh, and we provided rides to numerous people uh, with disabilities and had accessible vehicles uh, that would help us do that. Unfortunately, funding dried up, dried yeah. up probably about eight years ago okay. or so. So we haven't done that program. Okay. It would be nice to bring it back. Uh, yes, it would. But I, yeah, especially for people with disabilities yeah. who need rides to the polls. Yeah. But I mean, you can use Metro Mobility uh, for folks who are living uh, in the Twin Cities, you can use Metro Mobility, mm -hmm. uh, the public bus system uh, to get to your polling place. I believe uh, I've heard uh, that Uber and Lyft, although those companies are not always accessible, no. uh, do provide uh, rides to the polls. Right. Uh, so there are some options, but we right. really need to work on getting that uh, rise to the polls for people with disabilities back. Absolutely, that's why I brought that up. Yep. And then also accessibility is sometimes a big issue, not only in the small communities, but it has been in the Twin Cities. In other words, over at a building at 180 Wyzetta over in St. Paul, we had where the machines were put in right there and the people that lived there had the best. They just took an elevator, ramp down and voted, went back up to their their apartments or, and uh, so forth. And then I think years ago, they moved it out of there to a different place that wasn't accessible in the very beginning. And we had some problems. So, and you do sometimes in the smaller towns too, but we try to alleviate that. And I know the state council does a great job on trying to look into that so that that doesn't happen. But accessibility and transportation to, to make the success of your voting are an important factor. And, uh, you know, the polling place is important. And uh, we want to be sure we get the right people for the right job in the right office. And uh, so this voting thing, it's an American privilege and it's your right to vote. So we hope everybody gets to doing it. And is there anything you wanted to say about voting that I may have missed so far? Uh, well, I'll just touch a little bit on the accessibility piece. Uh, I, I'm an uh, supervising attorney at the Minnesota Disability Law Center. The Minnesota Disability Law Center has a, a grant uh, to do nonpartisan voting rights work. And for the past few years, uh, in conjunction with the uh, Minnesota Secretary of State's office, we have been doing, uh, we've recruited volunteers to do polling place accessibility uh, surveys to go into the polling place on election day and just look and make sure, you know, there are places to park, the doors are wide enough, there's an accessible route. Uh, and we will be continuing to do that uh, this year because it's never any process because yeah. 
there are new polling places uh, all the time. Uh, in that time, I found a number of examples of polling places that had accessibility issues. Okay. And fortunately, we've been able to address those. But, but yeah, voting accessibility and accessibility of the polling place is a really real concern. And uh, as far as working with the Secretary of State's office, how closely do you do that on an election year? Uh, not only an election year, uh, but non-election years as well. Uh, the Secretary of State's office has an advisory committee uh, for people with disabilities and the Disability Law Center, we are members of, of that. Uh, the Secretary of State's office is a, a great champion uh, for people with disabilities and making sure the elections are, are accessible to everyone. Uh, including people with disabilities. So how often does that committee meet? Uh, we've been meeting, uh, it just ramped up uh, again, and we are starting to meet quarterly. And can anybody join in the meetings, or is it just a committee that gets together? I think they are encouraging. They would like more members. Uh, but if you have questions, uh, I can follow up with you uh, about that. Because we would gladly pass the information along, or you come back and see us again and right. tell us about how that's going to work. Yep, because at our last meeting, I know uh, there it was there were a lot of people from the metro, not as many from outstate Minnesota, right. and there was hope that we could uh, encourage more people uh, from outstate Minnesota to join. Well, outstate Minnesota, they're encouraging more people to vote by mail, I guess. And that's an option always now. When the 50 states that there are in the U.S. are going through voting procedures or policies, how does that uh, equate to national? Is there a certain procedure that we follow, follow in Minnesota and all the states do, or do we kind of, because we're a state of Minnesota and we might want to do a different uh, idea, are, are, there, are there separate entities or is there a, a local committee like that and a national committee that would, that would meet? No, no uh, I mean, the Secretary of State's office uh, in Minnesota runs elections and the legislature, uh, they pass laws. Uh, mm -hmm. that govern elections. So the, the laws that we have uh, are kind of based on what the legislature uh, and the governor has have signed into law. Yeah. Uh, so how much lobbying is, is done in a given year? Do you have to lobby quite a bit and go down and always looking over the legislative committee as to what new laws should be passed or how things should be, could be done different to make it better? Uh, because of the divided legislature we've right. had the last right. few years, there hasn't been uh, much with regards to voting uh, that's happened, uh, unfortunately, uh, because we've had a history in Minnesota if you're going to do something, if you're going to pass a law regarding voting, uh, kind of the history is it's been on, done on a bipartisan basis. Yeah, and, uh, and we, don't, basis. we don't do that here, and we're about and, the only one that has a right, divided. Right, yeah. 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 And we're nonpartisan, so we'll educate uh, yeah. policymakers uh, with regards to voting laws uh, that are brought up. But there are uh, pieces of legislation uh, that I think would definitely benefit people with disabilities. Do you want to expound on that a little bit? Yeah. So, for examples, there is accessible, you might recall during the last election, during COVID, uh, everybody was encouraged to stay at home, uh, not necessarily go to the polls. Mm -hmm. And the Disability Law Center, the National Federation for the Blind, and the Secretary of State uh, or we urge the Secretary of State's office to adopt a accessible absentee voting for people who wanted to vote absentee but didn't want anybody to help them 
uh, vote. And we were able to get the Secretary of State's office to adopt, uh, adopt accessible absentee voting. However, you still need to, you need to request the absentee ballot, then you need to requ or request for your local election official a reasonable accommodation, and then they will send you a link uh, yeah. from Democracy Now yep. uh, to show you how to vote accessible absentee. But then you have to print out the ballot and put it in the envelope and have it signed and mail it back. Well, you have to have so, a, a witness signature. Right, too, and you so have to have a witness signature. You can't signature. just sign in your own name. Right, yeah. right, you have to have a witness signature. So there are ways to make that, so it's, a lot of it is accessible, but it's not fully accessible. Right. It yeah. would be nice. I know what it you're would, saying, It yes. would be nice to see that process yeah. fully accessible so yeah. people with disabilities who need to use that process we, don't we, have to rely on anyone else to see their we, private ballot. We have a, uh, makes me think we have a guy by the name of Rick Kellerman, I don't know if you know who he is, he's a no, I don't know lobbyist and he's always on everybody about having accessible websites right. for the vision impaired and all this and that and the other, which is good. I mean, yeah. it, is, it is good. It's it's tough at times when you're working on other things, but it, right. it's the whole premise is good. Uh, and is that accessibility in any one given way in the way we're doing that an issue in your mind, or are we all, we're all on the same page and we're all good? For accessibility? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, accessibility When it comes to the, to the ballot, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's just something that you always have to push for in many ways, uh, we are good. Uh, but, you know, in some ways it could be approved, like I just said with the accessible absentee voting, so someone doesn't need to rely on another person uh, to complete the process. Right. Uh, but it's nice to have the option that we do have, because it's light years ahead of where it was. Your, your name is Justin Page, and it's well respected around the community. Oh, well, around the state, that. and I really mean that. You're a good friend. This year, when we come back in 2023, 20, January 8th, is going to be a little different. And that 201 seats are up for election on November 8th here in the state of Minnesota, the governor included. Yep. And all of a sudden, after we get through the holidays and all that, you got a big job ahead of you. Because everybody in there is going to be brand new, and you got to start from square one and say, "Hi, I'm Justin Page. I'm the supervising attorney at the Disability Law Center, and I'd like to have some time with you, you know, to talk about things." Huh? And everybody starts to get busy down there, and how? And when you when you're how do what's the words I want to use here? When you're brand new and you're trying to 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 tell them what you need to tell them. What's what's the first and foremost important thing that you need to say as Alan Page, the supervising attorney at the Disability Law Center? In other words, you got everybody new down there, and they're going to know who you are, and what you do. But what's the what's the first thing that's the most important to you to say to somebody who's brand new in their position? Well, I don't spend a lot of time at the <laughs> legislature. You, you can either say I, I'm, I'm fortunate or, or, or not. Yeah, uh, you are fortunate, but, but that's yeah. Right. But I have uh, been to the legislature. I mean, it would just be about making those introductions and yeah. letting people know uh, who I am, who the Disability Law Center uh, is, and I imagine a lot of the partners, or yeah, a lot of the partners will be the same. Okay. So you just keep on pushing those those issues and for example like accessible uh, absentee voting I imagine uh, will probably want to educate the policymakers uh, and then just start kind of introducing ourselves and telling them what the issue is and why we think it needs to be fixed. Okay over over the years let's say you've been around there a long time and you have yep. uh, you know you don't come very often but you don't need to. Now I tell people that 
we have a harder time budgeting because we have a lot of different groups involved, you know, GLBTQ, disabled, uh, mad, uh, to name a few. Mm -hmm. And so when you are testifying and making your point and trying to get some of the state surplus, which there still is really, uh, you really have to testify well and have all your bullet points ready, even when you're talking to your senators and representatives. What can you recommend to anybody who might be watching as to how to, you know, get your point across when you're talking to a senator, a representative, who has never done it before? What would you recommend if you have an issue? What would be the most important thing you can do is trying to really promote what you have to say? Right. Well, this is not really my area of expertise, but I'll do my best to try to answer. I, I would just uh, make sure because, I mean, when I've talked to senators or representatives, they don't have a lot of time. So you need to be uh, concise, yeah, but you need you to uh, find a way to figure out a way to tell your story mm -hmm. and why you're there and how the issue impacts you and kind of what you would like to see done. Uh, as a result. That's why we do Tuesdays at the Capitol yep. and uh, to give people who it might take a little extra time to talk to your uh, representative uh, or, or senator. That's why we take the time to do that mm -hmm. and to that that we can have the different focus groups come in on any given Tuesday and, and talk and but you still got to be concise and uh, we want to promote Community Tuesday at this point and tell everybody who can be down there for Community Tuesday yeah. to try to get there because it's very beneficial. And it's kind of relates to our disability community. And is there anything that we may have missed that you want to say before we? Uh... Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I can just end on this. You know, I give presentations all across the state mm -hmm. uh, to people with disabilities on voting. And one of the, the biggest questions that I get uh, with regards to voting are, is I'm under guardianship, can I vote? And the answer is generally yes. People who are under guardianship in the state of Minnesota are able to vote unless their guardianship papers specifically say mm -hmm. they're not allowed to vote. So if a guardianship order is silent on the right to vote, you can vote. Uh, so it's very important. Uh, so the presumption is that people with disabilities who are under guardianship can vote. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, if there's any questions, uh, you should refer to your uh, guardianship papers. And if they don't say anything about voting, you should go exercise your, your vote. Your right to vote, yeah. 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 And uh, if anybody would have any questions on your right to vote or voting in the state of Minnesota, who can they call and do we have a website they can use? Uh, yep, so the Minnesota Secretary of State's office has a very detailed website mm -hmm. uh, with kind of all information voting, including information about uh, mm -hmm. accessibility, and voting from a residential facility and absentee voting uh, and the agent delivery model. Mm -hmm. uh, and that website is www.menvotes, MN votes. Very good. Thank you. And thanks for being here today. Yeah, absolutely. And Thank you for having oh, me. Oh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. And I hope we covered all we needed to cover. And if we didn't, come on back. Yep, uh, sure will. Again, my guest today has been the Honorable Justin Page, Supervising Attorney for the Discipline Law Center, and that's in Minneapolis. He has been a good friend and very instrumental in the disabled community, and we're very proud of him. And if, we, if there's anything we've missed today, he is always welcome back. And at this point, we'd like to thank you for watching Disability Viewpoints. This is our special show on voting, and we're now in our 25th year. And we'd also like this point to thank ESPNN for helping us put this production together. For the entire crew at Disability Viewpoints, I'm Mark Hughes. Thanks for watching and bye for now.